Welcome to a special edition of the Global Gaming Business Podcast, the industry's first and longest running podcast now in our 16th year. I'm Roger Gross, the publisher of GGB, and this week we feature a discussion with Art Pikowski, the president of the International Center for Responsible Gaming, on his new role and why he believes the new entrants to the industry need to step up. This week's program is brought to you by Konami Gaming. Later in the show, we'll talk about two Konami slot series ranked top grossing premium lease games by Eilers and Crycheck. Welcome to the Global Gaming Business Podcast. Our guest today is Arthur Pikowski, the new uh, president of the International Center for Responsible Gaming. Arthur, thanks for joining us. It's, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate your taking the time to talk to me today. So you're pretty much new to the industry. Uh, why don't you give us a little of your background and wh what you've done in your career prior to joining the ICRG? Yeah, Roger, I have been working in the not-for-profit space for 43 years. Uh, I've worked for a number of different uh, charities. Uh, so I'm a cause-oriented person. Um, I've had a number of different exposures to combinations of Las Vegas, uh, addiction. Um, mm -hmm. And so when the opportunity presented itself, I was sort of at a point of transition, sort of thinking that I was going to move out of full-time work. Right. To doing more consulting, which I had done for a while, that that this sounded like a really interesting, unique challenge, and sure. I interviewed for it, and here I am. Okay, what were some of the specifics that that attracted you to the ICRG? Well, I think there are a couple of things. First of all, um, the 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 space is ripe for advancement. In that, first of all, I, I don't think we're raising nearly enough money to find the important work ahead. And, you know, having gone and looked at what the research has taught the industry over the past 25 years, which frankly is a lot, there's a lot of understanding now as a result of the outcome of this incredible research that we do, that when you look ahead to the new challenges, sports betting, uh, online gambling, and things like that, uh, I think we're just sort of scratching the surface of what we need to know to better inform the industry to to be more involved in responsible gaming. Sure, sure, absolutely. So what kind of homework have you done yeah, or, or are you still doing uh, to really get up to speed and, uh, and uh, you know, figure out what the industry's role is in supporting your organization? Well, first of all, this organization has been around for 25 years. So a lot of it is getting a deeper understanding of what's been accomplished. And, you know, I think the thing is it's not research for research sake, right? There's applicability. What, what have we learned from the research that's actually being implemented? And certainly the stuff that we now know about the compulsive gambling mind has been really important in terms of cognitive behavioral therapy and stuff like that. I am a, I do have a master's degree in social work, so I, I do have some understanding of, of how these things work. So I think part of it is understanding what this organization has meant for 25 years. I think secondly is to get into the headspace of our board. We have really, really talented people on our board. Um, and they themselves say, you know, we can do more and we want to do more. So I think getting an understanding of who they are, where they fit into the industry and things like that, understanding our organizational fundraising in the past and, and developing a plan for the future is something I've been spending a lot of time on. We also have a great staff team in Boston. So a lot of it is I want to get us positioned. It's now mid-November by the end of December to launch a really, really impressive 2020, 20, 2022 fundraising campaign with lots of people being more involved. Sure. Okay, great, great. Well, you know, Frank Farenkopf told me many times when he was president of the uh, American Gaming Association that, that forming the, at that time, the National Center for Responsible Gaming was one of the best things he ever did uh, during his term. Uh, have you had a chance to speak with him or any of the other AGA uh, members now? I know the, the NCRG, the ICRG now is a completely separate entity. In those days, it was it was kind of under the the umbrella of the AGA, but, but it, you know, it's been a separate entity for years, but the AGA is still very interested in, in the success of the organization. Roger, so much so that last week when I was in Washington, I went to the AGA offices. I met with a couple of members of their team and I said, collaboration. Yeah. You know, I'm all about collaboration. And we talked about different ways that we could work more closely together, um, even including having somebody from AGA represented on our board, which hasn't been the case in a while. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really think that there's an enormous opportunity to co-venture on things and co-promote on things. And they were very receptive to it. So 
I think for whatever reason, historically, it's like it was extremely close and then it started to separate. I want to bring it closer, right? But not not to have them own us again. I don't think that's right. certainly an item, but let's work more closely together on things that represent common purpose. Yeah, I, th I think they could actually, you know, certainly uh, help improve your visibility in the industry and, and, uh, and uh, you know, the cause that, that you have is certainly their cause as well. So I think that that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I think that as a, as a side piece on that, Roger, is that, you know, there is a, a strong awareness, I believe, from talking to a lot of people about the importance of responsible gaming, right? right. But the question now is, okay, there's a visibility there, there's an importance to it, what are we going to do about it? Okay, right. that's, that's the question I'm asking. What can we all do about it to make sure that, look, our organization first and foremost is going to be about education and prevention okay right. let's let's get into the fight before we have to deal with somebody who has a gambling disorder right. and so a lot of our research is going to be oriented to accomplishing that sure I think one of the most important things that, that you guys have discovered over the years is that uh, that there's a certain comorbidity to uh, to uh, a problem gambling. Uh, if if you have a problem with gambling, you usually have a problem with 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 drugs or alcohol or sex or or any of the other addictions, and and that really makes it difficult. It's almost like you have to throw your hands up. What can we do? You know, because you have so many problems. But but when I was interviewing Alan Feldman uh, the other day, he, he he just pointed out what you exactly pointed out there. If we, if we get ahead of the game here, if we get ahead of the these addictions, you know, possibly, you know, we'll be able to head, head off at least one of those morbidities. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I, I think that, you know, the National Center for Problem Gambling does great work with people who are, you know, in that place right now in terms of providing counseling and, and other things that they do. And I think that, you know, where we want to be, our position is to, to get to exactly what you and Alan just spoke about, which is to see what we can do to mitigate the harms. Sure. You know, not deal with the harms after they're in places. To me, really, really, the most important work that we can do, you know, in, in helping this industry, you know, because look, at the end of the day, the industry itself, for most people, the vast majority of people, it, it's fun. Let's face it, people go, they, they have a good time, and they don't have a gambling disorder. They're not on the way to a gambling disorder. So on balance, right, we have a situation sure. where for the large majority of people, they enjoy it and it's fine. It's probably even mentally healthy in some degree. You get away from right. home, you have fun. But for the others, this is there. there is a consequence, right? And the, the field should understand it and we should find ways to mitigate it. Right, no question. So sports betting has brought a lot of uh, other uh, companies, new companies and other organizations into the into the gaming industry. Have they have they stepped up and supported the ICRG as, as the traditional gaming companies have done through the years in, in your opinion? Well, I think if you, you touched on the most important point. There are new companies that have gotten into the mix, right? Who ever heard of DraftKings 10 years ago, right? Yeah, or right. FanDuel. It, it, it's, a, it's a whole evolution in the industry, right? A lot of people are coming in, not only the code name brands, the Caesars and so on and so forth, but, but these new companies. And of course, they're gigantic already. So uh, the, the one thing that, that I'm very proud of already is that we just um, funded uh, a major sports wagering research study. Mm -hmm. And the way that we got the resources is we went to companies who are in that space in particular in gaming. Right. And we said, this has to be studied. And a number of them came forward and supported it. And it's a big study. It's a $400,000 study over three years. And hopefully after that study is completed, we'll know here's what we want to try to learn to establish the prevalence of sports wagering behaviors in the adult population in the United States to identify risk factors for problematic sports wagering behaviors, explore how new technology influences sports betting, and establish the natural trajectories of sports wagering behaviors over time. Yeah. I think that's going to help all of them a lot, right? Absolutely. So the, yeah, so the fact that we could, we could partner around things of specific interest to specific companies to me, as a wave of the future, we ought to be doing more of that. We ought to be doing more ideation with people in the field about what is it that you're seeing that you want us to learn more about. And all of these things are being discussed with our scientific advisory board, and it's all going to get rolled out. Since September, two high-performing Konami slot series have ranked in IROs and Crychecks list of top-performing parent game slash premium least. 
Both All Aboard and Ocean Spin have demonstrated consistently strong results, and both are available now on Dimension 49J, awarded first place for Best Slot Product in this year's GGB Gaming and Technology Award. Learn more by visiting konamigaming.com slash premiums. So, you know, the, in addition to all these companies that are coming into the industry, you, you also got like a lot of the pro teams and, and the professional sports leagues getting involved in, in, in gaming. I just saw a promotion uh, yesterday, which I thought was pretty smart, where Caesars is, is, uh, is uh, giving a $500 rebate for season tickets for the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, uh, that makes a lot of sense for them, but, uh, but this shows you how, how tight they are with, with the sports betting companies. Uh, so, so should they step up to the plate as well, the sports, the sports teams and the sports leagues in, in supporting your efforts at ICRG? I, I, Roger, I don't think there's anything more obvious than that, right? I mean, when you see superimposed on the pitching mound during the playoffs, you know, FanDuel, Right. It, it, it's hard to it's hard to say that we're not you know we're not together here. There's right. a there's a common interest that they have around that, and we understand it. Excuse me. Um, we understand it, and I think they should they should be called on to step up to recognize that they have a responsibility there also. <laughs> sure. Well, I, you know we've. We saw um, the NBA commissioner taking the lead in, in saying sports betting isn't isn't the evil uh, empire as, as we used to believe. Uh, you know the the NHL has stepped up, and certainly uh, you know Major League Baseball as well. So, are you going to have conversations with with those those leagues to to uh, you know point out where they, they need to be helping? Yeah, we're actually in the process now of figuring out who we need to talk to. Um, I think it's becoming apparent to those sports teams that they need to staff up on this. And put somebody in place that actually is responsible for responsible gaming. Right. And so that's also, I mean, whereas we talked just a few minutes ago about, you know, the, the gaming companies that are in the sports space. Now we need to look at how the sports themselves benefit from this, which they do monetarily, and begin to get them to understand that responsibility. So it, it's really a matter of sort of like figuring out who to talk to, what the process is. And, and we're trying to do that right now. Sure, absolutely. So the mission statement of the uh, ICRG uh, focuses on independent peer-reviewed research. You know, the it puts up with a firewall between between the industry and and the researchers. Uh, you know, when when Frank started this organization, he said he said we didn't know what what they were going to come up with. They could have come up with some some you know, the heinous number that, that we really hurt people. He said, uh, we didn't know that we, but we wanted to know that. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but isn't it integrity that, that the ICRG has that, that really uh, gives it validity? Uh, Roger, honestly, it's one of the reasons I took the job. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that the process and the separation is absolutely mm -hmm. critical. Um, not only is the, you know, is the proposal vetted independently, but unless it, achieves the highest scores possible, similar to what NIH would do with a proposal, right. we're not going to fund it. Right. And, and I said, as long as I'm the president of the organization, there will never be any compromise on that. There's right. not going to be anything other than the greatest scrutiny because I want to be able to go back to a funder and say, we did this research at the highest level. Uh, there's great integrity to the information that we're providing. And now let's talk about how you can put that information to good use in your space. Sure, sure. Uh, well, on the other end of the spectrum, there, there's a lot of organizations in, in, a, in a couple of different nations that they've built a little mini uh, research into gaming, and they have to find bad things to continue that that industry to grow. Uh, for example, in Australia, they, they keep uh, coming up with these crazy studies that, that you know that uh, you know gambling is hurting the Australians in, in such great numbers that we know isn't true because we've had all these scientific you know uh, peer-reviewed research studies done. That it's a very small percentage of people. People. But how do you, how do you kind of battle that in terms of uh, of uh, you know making sure they present great information as well? Well, it's interesting, Roger, because I, as an outsider, asked the question. You know, why did we need to find out that essentially one percent of the adult population in the United States has a gambling disorder? And and I was told because of a lot of information or not inf misinformation, people were making up numbers saying it was twenty five percent, fifty percent, or eighty percent. So, yeah, I think the fact we now quantify, you know, we have an understanding of the scope of the problem is good. The other side of that, though, is 
1% of the entire adult population in the United States is still a lot of people, right? So sure, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It, it's it's a lot better than had it been 25%, which mm-hmm. would have been jaw-dropping, right? So, but but I think that, you know, understanding the scope of the problem was, was absolutely critical. And, and I think that everything we will try to present to the industry will be presented honestly, good, bad, yeah. or otherwise. Yeah. You know, if it's good news, you're going to hear it. If it's bad news, you need to hear that too so that you can respond in a responsible fashion. Sure. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, even if it's just 1%, we, we still care about those people and we don't, don't want them harmed by our product. Exactly. So, so what, are, what are your plans over the next year to get the message out to, to uh, you know, not only the traditional gaming companies, but the new entrants into the market? Well, I think it's uh, we're going to professionalize on some level. We will have, um, by the first of the year, we're going to have a, a fully articulated campaign plan. What, what are we going to do to increase our resource development side? Mm-hmm. We're going to have a fully articulated case for giving. Why should, why should a funder support the organization? With concrete information, we're going to have a marketing plan. Yeah, we're mostly saying something that sounds like this is an organization that is worthy and that we're doing compelling work and there's a lot of work left to be done. The, sure. the, the, that message should be consistent. Yeah, no question. Well, Arthur, uh, it's great to uh, to have uh, hosted you on this podcast, and congratulations on being named one of our 25 people to watch for 2022, because there's a lot of people that are going to be watching uh, your organization and, and how you do your job. So uh, thanks for joining us, and, and let's uh, catch up uh, halfway through next year to find out you know, how's it going. That'd be great, Roger. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and uh, good luck with all the great work that you do. Hope you enjoyed this week's podcast with thanks again to Konami Gaming. Visit KonamiGaming.com slash premiums for more on this year's best slot product, Dimension 49J. To learn more about responsible gaming and the role the ICRG plays, visit ggbmagazine.com. To get all the news of the gaming industry delivered to your desktop every Monday morning, visit ggbnews.com and enter the code GGB180 for a free subscription. Don't miss a single episode of the podcast. Sign up on Spotify or Apple Podcasts today. So we'll see you next time on the GGB Podcast.